Hi there, welcome to this build of a Clancy Aviation Speedy B. With a, it's got a 40 inch wingspan and it's going to be powered by an OS FS26, so one of the really small four stroke engines. Now, first thing we did in this build was to create or to build the nacelle, and the reason we did that is because when we then went on to build the wing, we could make sure that it fitted nice and snugly between the ribs like that, which is where it's going to go eventually. We've still got a little bit more to do to fit this, but uh, we'll leave that until a later date. Now, as you can see, the wing is in a fairly advanced state of construction. Not finished, a lot to do still. There's uh, mounting plates in here for servos, for the pilot, as I said, the nacelle needs to fit on, and actually there's a piece of um, turtle deck that needs to go on the back. Now on the plans, we're, we're building this from a great set of plans downloaded off the Outer Zone website, and you can see them on the wall behind me. Now on the, uh, and there'll be a link in the description below if you want to get those plans. Now on the plans it shows a central servo here, and bell here and bell cranks to operate the ailerons. Well, in this video, I'm going to be mounting some two wing servos, probably around here and here, to operate the ailerons. Now, you can see the ailerons are still built into the wing because when we built the wing, we uh, it, like I say, they're, <laughs> they're built in. So, now what we need to do is cut them out, so cut through the leading edge, the ribs, trailing edge, and clean them up so we can then get them hinged, and then I need to start thinking about the mounting of those two servos. We're going to be using some micro servos. I'll, um, I'll show you what they are in a minute when I, when I can find them. I can't see them to hand. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut out those two ailerons, clean them up, and then have a look at hinging them. Right, well both of the ailerons are cut out now and <laughs> it's surprising how big they look once they're detached from the, uh, from the actual wing itself. I've given them a sand, the cut edges, neaten them up and on the front edge of this aileron I've profiled it a little bit. You can see just there compared to uh, the one I haven't done, this one. And uh, just to make it a better fit onto the uh, onto the wing. Now on the plans it shows two hinges, one there, one there. I'm going to put a central one evenly spaced between the two. I think it'd be better to have three hinges, a bit more support, and I'm going to use these uh, these Kavan hinges from Germany and uh, I'm going to put a, a slot in and epoxy these into place. Of course I won't put the hinges in until the wing is covered. I've marked the center line where the hinge is going to go so I'll get those fitted now on both sides and, uh, and make sure they're nice and, uh, nice and smooth. Now I've got the three hinge points marked. I've got the centre line for each one. And the important thing to do is when you start the cut with this tool, make sure the spikes are on the line. Just get that started a little bit. I'm going to put that on the bench and you need to make sure that you go through square on the timber and I'm just going to support that at the back because we don't want to break these spars I can feel it just coming through now and we just want to work that just nice and slowly until it comes all the way through put a finger either side now there we go, and yeah, through, and pull that out, get the hinge, and that should just slide in nicely. There we go. Look at that. Right, well, I've now got the hinges done for both ailerons, and you can see those are lovely and free. There's no friction there at all, and plenty of movement. I had thought about using mylar hinges but 
they have a little bit of uh, resistance in themselves and if I'm using micro servos I didn't really want them to have to do work against the hinges so hence these hinges and, uh, and, and as I said they're lovely and free. Now next thing I'm going to do oh and if it had been a slightly different design I might have put a little bit of timber on the back of this quarter inch square spar just like this just so it give the hinges more purchase. I did start to make a piece, this one, and then I realised that if I glue those onto that spar, it's going to show up on the covering because the covering's going to stick to it. And I thought I'd rather not have that showing up, I'd rather have the, the clean lines on the covering. And to be honest, these are going to be epoxied in these hinges, and I suspect it's not going to need any more wood. They're going to be really strong and I've got three hinges so I think that'll be fine it's, it's not really necessary to put these blocks on. Now the next job I need to do is to make some horns some control horns to go on this rib just here and they just stick up on the wing and uh, obviously will link through to the servos. Now on the plans it suggests using 1.5 mil plywood well I'm going to use this 1.5mm fiberglass board and I've got it in black I thought black would be nice compared to having the wood and fiberglass board will be a lot stronger the holes for the clevises will hopefully stay the size I drill them they won't grow which they might wear a little bit in the plywood and get a little bit sloppy so I've decided to plump for this and um, I think this will be a nice job these are the control horns, it's uh, on the plans and uh, I'm going to use that as a pattern to cut out the uh, control horns and, uh, and like I say they just glue on the side and, um, and then there's a cap strip that goes on top. So I'm going to get these cut out now and then I'm going to start to scratch my head and think about how I'm going to build a little bay here and have the servos in there so that they can come out in easily if there's a problem they can be replaced so I will get on and do that now and we'll come back and have a look at the the horns and the solution we've got for these servos right well I've now come up with a solution for mounting the servos and I've made one of the control horns which is going to go onto this rib here but rather than put it straight on the rib I'm going to have a little bit of a spacer still need to determine the exact size of that spacer so it lines up with the servo but that's kind of roughly where it's going to go and if I just turn that around just see that will operate via a linkage coming down to a servo in this area here now I've made a, a false rib and that's just going to go in there to help make a servo bay now on the underside of here we're going to have a plate and it's going to be made from this uh, one and a half mil plywood and it's going to have a servo mounted on it like that and that plate is going to screw in from underneath and on the top the only thing that you'll see of the servo is a piece of cap strip with a slot in it and the control rod coming out I'm going to trim this rib down a little bit so it doesn't catch the covering and so that's all you'll see just that cap strip and the control rod coming out now on the underside as I said we're going to have this servo which is mounted on a plate which is just going to screw up there'll be four screws probably and those screws are going to screw into some pieces of quarter inch spruce which is going to be fitted in to the uh, this bay here and what I'm going to do is I'll put one against the shear webbing there I will put another one just forward enough for the servo and then I'll just put some sides of 316 balsa just put that in like that so these pieces will be glued to the ribs and they'll be just lifted up enough for that plate to lie flush on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom of the wing, and the it, it, it's a good way to do it like that, I think, because the bottom of the wing is flat, 
and you won't see the plate when you're looking at the model. If we put the plate in the top, then it's curved, so it's a little bit more complicated, not much, but you will see it, and it just won't look good. So we'll have, oops, just caught that with the lead. So we'll have those pieces of timber in there, and then the servo will just be slotted in like that, and we'll have that connection coming up. I hope that makes sense. Now, the servos I'm using are these Emacs servos, so they're ES, I'll move that closer, ES08MA2. And you can see the, uh, if I move that right in, hopefully that's focusing on the spec so you can see what they are. So they're, they're really light, they're only 12 grams, uh, and yet if you use 6 volts, which I'm going to do, they will hopefully move 2 kilos and that's measured from the inside edge I think so but they should be powerful enough all of the stuff I've seen so far in the uh, Clancy Aviation stuff has suggested micro servos are sufficient so they will be mounted in there oh and I've just screwed those in with some hex head screws so I'm going to get on now and pull this together hopefully I've explained that but you'll see better once I've uh, once I've put it together Okay, a quick update because I've got the structure in there to hold the, uh, the servo plate and as I said it's flat, flush with the underside, the flat underside of the wing and the plate will just screw onto there with the servo on the inside and there we can see. What I've done is I've put on a little bit of balsa on the back here just to strengthen that up I've put a little bit of triangular stock there and that's really quite rigid now will hold the servo quite nicely now this plate it's going to have the servo on it like that so it can be slotted up into the wing the servo is just screwed into a couple of pieces of beach they're just sort of scraps from engine bearers from previous builds and when I screwed them in, and this was really important, when you screw them into hardwood like this, you want to pilot drill it. If you just try and screw them in, it's just going to split the wood. So what I'm going to do now is work out where that needs to be, and then epoxy those bits of beach onto that plate. I can then fix it in the wing, couple it all up, and uh, that will probably take a little bit of time just getting those couplings right. One of the reasons I put the servo back here is because it will be stronger against the shear webbing. It's got quite a nice solid structure with the shear webbing to go against. It's also nearer the CG, which uh, I'm not sure where it is, but it's, it's, it's around here. So it's kind of on the CG almost. And there was another reason as well. Oh, it makes the control rod a little bit longer and makes the angle a little bit less acute. The nearer it is to the horn, the more acute it's going to be. So having it a little bit further away will be a benefit. So I'm going to get this all set up now and we'll see how it works. Right, well, I've now got the ailerons and the connections and the servos all finished on this wing. I say all finished, I've just got the cap strips on this side to do. But I've left those off so that when I film this, you can actually see it a, a, a little bit better than being hidden by the cap strips. So you can see on that side, I've got the control arm coming out, or the control linkage coming out of that cap strip to this uh, nice black uh, glass fibre uh, control horn that I, I've cut out of the sheet. And on that side, we've got uh, a little bit better view with the um, without the cap strips on and you can see I've put on a little bit of a spacer there just to bring that out a little bit from this rib to line it up better with the servo and all you're going to see on the top of this wing is this control arm and the linkage coming out of the top of the wing because as I said previously the servos are going to be inserted on the underside on these uh, plywood plates and that seems to work really nice and I think it will give it a nice finish rather than having the, the plates on top. So I'm going to get the, the cap strips glued on now. I've got this one here made, ready to go. But if you take a quick look at this uh, 
bit of video and you can see it working without the cap strips and with the cap strips. So take a look at this. Well the, the throws I've got on this uh, at the moment are about an inch up, inch down, slightly over. Now I've read on different Clancy Aviation uh, literature, bits of literature, where they say you want an inch up and an inch down, which seems quite a lot to me. But I've also seen on Clancy Aviation stuff where it says half an inch up and down, which seems a lot more realistic to me. These are quite large ailerons and an inch throw is, is quite a lot. So I'm going to have a look a, a, a look a little bit more and see what I can find out, but I don't think I'm going to be setting them at an inch for the maiden flight. So we've oh, and the ailerons aren't glued in now. These hinges they will obviously get done once I've done the covering because it would be really hard to do the covering like this. The wing still needs a good finishing. It still needs profiling, sanding, but it's great to get these ailerons now all sorted. So the next thing we're going to be doing I think is moving on to the fuselage which I'm really excited about. So I hope you'll come back in the, and see in the next video where we start building up the fuselage size and I hope you've enjoyed seeing how we get on fitting these aileron servos and getting all the linkages sorted. So thanks very much for watching.